becoming used. I can tell you at Vedanta, for instance, there's a place to want to bid on investment. Mm. How much money has come in towards that place of investment? Because you see, once beaten, they say twice shy. What we're expecting from the government is if you go into an agreement with to parliament, challenge the needs of minds. Number one, tell the nation who the equity partner is. They say it's Delta, but Delta is a subsidiary of IRH. Interrogate that. You are journalists. Tell me how much money that secret equity partner or you are the MP issue the money. You are killing us. That is why I speak so passionately. Do you about regret this? having attended yes, some do. of those events? Do I do. Regret? I do. Because that is making me go to a celebrated elegant. Mm. A sham. Have you, handled, have you explained that to your people? Yes, I've, I've been trying have to you apologize that. to your people. Uh, um, I, I, I you any given time, even now, I want, to apologize. I want to publicly apologize. Yeah. I did not know what I was being taken to, but after realizing, I am prepared to apologize that I was taken to go and celebrate what is nothing. Because there's nothing happening at Mopan. Who took you there? Who invited the, you? The, the, my friends convinced me. Okay, uh, Honorable Gary convinced me. Uh, Honorable Kavuma convinced me, Honorable Chitotela convinced me. I was very reluctant, but because I'm a member of parliament, I saw it fit to go and witness that. Mm. I think the normal core of duty is that when something is happening in your community, you must go, despite you don't agree with them. But when the reality dawns, I think that we expect it to be mag mag magnanimous and say, I think we errored. Mm. Our friends have not been sincere over the transaction at Mopan. I love the fact that uh, you've given a very rich history about uh, the mining sector in Zambia from Zambia uh, from the time we got independence and uh, where we are today as a country. And it sounds like we've um, somehow messed up as a country. We've sabotaged the dreams and the aspirations of uh, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda because you've talked about, uh, for example, the industries we had, the battery industries, we, we had uh, the Making. We had everything, almost everything. Almost everything. everything if I you talk about the agriculture sector as well, we had, uh, you know, NCZ, which was able to produce fertilizer. Exactly. Uh, now, the question I have, how much time or how much effort do we need to put in to reclaim back that which we could have lost? But at the same time, again, remember, the UPND and President Akendishima in particular, he keeps on reminding us, telling us that, look, this country was in a mess. Uh, you are lucky to have us as UPND now, uh, and uh, you can only wish that we came in earlier because from the time we got independence, this country has been in wrong hands. What was the mess that UPN left this country in, or PF? PF left a debt that is um, estimated to be about $20 billion, yeah? Mm. Okay? This is a debt that we all talk about. The entire 20 million people and educated people have been talking about $20 billion as if it's anything. I'll give you an example of just what opportunity Zambia has. You are the foreigner in the name of that Vietnamese, seeing an opportunity far away from Vietnam in your land. Zambia has got a land mass of somewhere around uh, uh, 56 million hectares. This gentleman who is sitting in Vietnam sees an opportunity in your land and says, guys, just give me 6 million hectares and I can bring about 70 billion uh, uh, dollars. Now, hypothetically, let's say this was to happen. You give somebody 6 million hectares, he brings 70 billion. How much is 70 billion? Compared to your debt, you pay off your 20 billion dollar and your 50 billion, do you know what 50 billion is? Mm -hmm. But you see, it would be foolish for us to give away 6 million hectares. What that gentleman should have done to us is to open up our minds. We say, look, what has that guy seen that is prepared to bring 70 billion? Mm -hmm. Yet this is a country that is talking about a debt. You know what Vasata used to say? Vasata used to say, no win, no win. I think that is what we are. We are a people who don't think properly. This is a foreigner IP. This is a foreigner who sees an opportunity in your land and not the entire land. Sees an opportunity over a six million hectares of land and can actually mobilize six. $70 billion. What does that tell you? That land, that guy was not going to come and cultivate rice. Are you telling me I should I, I, bring my rice with the moon? No. That guy had seen mineral wealth. He had seen sujirite. Mm. Because he was talking about Luapula yeah. and uh, Muchinga. Muchinga. He had seen sujirite. He had seen the gold in Kasenseni. That is what he was interested in. That, th those minerals are worth more than $70 billion. So it would have been foolish for the UPND government 
to give our six million on a 70 billion investment pledge because that land is worth more than 70 billion dollars so when we talk about the mess that pf left us okay let's agree the 20 billion dollars was a mess the debt of 20 billion dollars mm -hmm. why have we failed to pay that 20 billion dollars debt in the midst of or in abundance of god reserves everywhere because today ip there's god everywhere you go check your internet on how much your god is fetching today by the way let me say this to the nation mm. kaunda and his government had actually done a, 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 a mapping and survey of our mineral deposition you must know that mm. but in the wisdom of kaunda certain areas kaunda preserved those lands for the future use of those minerals in mm. some places he established plantations yeah. if you go to kitwe itimbi has got minerals all over but kaunda established plantations if you go to Lower Zambezi, it's not like Kaunda did not know that there are minerals there. He knew, but he put animals to preserve those minerals for the future. Today, you are excited with aerial survey. You want to survey the entire country so that you open up the entire country to mining activities. What is there for the future? What is there for your children and your grandchildren, IP? If you are going to open up the entire country in the excitement, because by you people are too excited, and they think that everybody is so down. You, you want to do these aerial surveys, to, to now establish wherever the mineral is so that there can be mining activity. What will be there for the future? Nothing. And the sad part is that there's no guarantee that if we start mining activities everywhere, then Zambians will benefit. What guarantee is it? Because that's what we've been taught. Uh, but I've been told by as assured Zambians that uh, whatever you know, uh, dividends we shall get or process we shall, we shall, we shall discover along the way, the people of Zambia will be a number one beneficiary. IP, our chiefs are wallowing in poverty. I come from Rapula, which province has discovered surge light. Tell me which chief or what benefit has come to the country from that surge light, other than the reports of stealing. <laughs> By who? By the cadres. If you have those reports today, in the wisdom of Bakaunda, the surge light is always bad but did not open it up because we had enough copper. Okay, today we discover the surge lights. When we should have been deriving benefits, when the communities in Luapula, the chiefs and the residents of Luapula there would have been celebrating in the discovery of surge lights. Have you ever heard anything being done by government? Nothing. But haven't you heard that the cadres have been stealing surge lights? Doesn't it sound very convenient that government is very mute over this discovery of surge lights? Meanwhile, there are reports of their people stealing surge light every day. And then you must be assured by Chito that these discoveries, these minerals are going to benefit our country. How? Today, our emeralds is the world's best emeralds. What benefits come to the country? What benefits? Sir, today, the energy, the, the world is transitioning to clean energy. You have, if you have a solar, that battery is running on lithium. If you have an electric car, that battery is running on lithium. There's plenty of lithium mm. in southern province in Mapatiza. What is happening? Nothing, sir. Let's talk about the uh, the, the, the rule of law. Uh, President Akande Shema is on record uh, having, you know, reminded all of us that uh, the, his government has come to make a change, and this change must be a real change. He has cautioned his members in government, uh, be it ministers, PSAs, that if you commit a crime, you are going to put your own. We can't compare ourselves, or we can't be doing the same things, which are the same wrong things which were being done in the past. When it comes to the implementation of the rule of law, how would you assess and also, you know, analyze the UPND? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that's <laughs> another um, It is easy to make a pronouncement but everything to live by that pronouncement. The rule of law simply means, let's rule by the law. Let me give you just one, two examples of what it means to rule by the law. The Public Order Act. Do you know what the Public Order Act dictates? If I want to have an assembly, I must notify the police. This is clearly espoused in the Christian Jirundika and others' case. Mm. 
that if you want to have a gathering, be it a rally or otherwise, you must simply notify the police. How many people have applied for rallies, or rather have notified the police for rallies, who have ended up being arrested? Is that the rule of law? No, sir. The proceed of crime law, okay, shifts the responsibility of proving that you actually did not commit a crime from the one who claims you committed a crime. Because look, the constitution of Zambia, now let me state this for those who don't understand, understand the law. Yeah. The constitution of Zambia is the supreme law of the land. Any law, subsidiary law you create, that contravenes the, 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 the constitution should be declared now and void. So if you were to say that you are living by the rule of law, mm. you must ensure that every law you are enforcing does not contravene the constitution. The presumption of innocence holds that if I am accused to have committed a crime, I'm innocent until you prove me guilty. Who should prove? You who accuses me to have committed a crime. That bogus law, that fake useless law called mm. the, the process of crime shifts that responsibility. First of all, it holds me guilty by pronouncement. Now, when I suspect that immediately you grab that. Ordinarily, that means that you found me guilty before you can even prove me guilty. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you come to ask me, no proof to us that you did not steal the car. It's you who is alleging me that I've stolen. It's you to prove. You understand? Yeah. So, when we say rule by the law, we must allow the law to govern. It must not the rule by men, by the rule by the law. What the law says is what must be applied. So, with what we have said, what do you make of uh, some people who have been convicted? We've seen also some properties that have been seized by the state under the same law that uh, deals with uh, properties that are reasonably suspected to be process of crime. And people have failed to justify how they acquired those properties. What do you make of the uh, these cases that we have witnessed so far? It's circus. It's a circus. It's foolishness. I think. Mm. What do you call that court? It's called what? The crime legion. The financial and crime. Financial court. and crimes court. Yeah. First of all, the financial and crimes court. Yeah. 